Section 1. You will hear a conversation between a customer and a booking officer at a theatre. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Hello, Theatre Royal Plymouth? Oh, uh, hello. I'd like to make a booking, please. Yes. What is it you want to see? The imposter. Right. And which day did you want to come? Friday the 25th. Just a moment and I'll check availability on the computer. Oh, sorry, we're fully booked for that performance. Oh dear, um, what about the following day then? The 26th? Yes, that's OK. We've got two performances on that day, one at 3.30 and one at 7. Which would you prefer? Oh, the later one, please. Mm -hmm. How many people? Well, there are four of us. Are there any concessions? Any children? Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, my daughters are 15 and 12. Do they get concessions? Only the 12-year-old, I'm afraid. So that's one child and three adults. Any idea where you'd like to sit? Stalls or circle? Uh... Tickets for the stalls are a bit more expensive. £12 for adults and £8.50 for children. The circle costs £10.50 and £6.50. Do you get a good view from the circle? Oh, yes. And in fact, we've got some seats left at the front, if you'd like those. Right. We'll go for those, then. Right. That's seats A21 to 24, then. They're very good seats. That sounds fine. So, let's see. That comes to £38 altogether for the tickets. How do you want to collect them? Shall I put them in the post? They'd be sent today by first-class mail and there'd be an additional charge of £1 to cover postage and administration. Or do you want to get them from the box office yourself? Oh, yes. Could you send them, please? No problem. That'll be £39 altogether. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10... Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Could I just take your card details? What kind of card is it? Visa? Switch? MasterCard. OK. And the number? It's 3290 5876-4401-2899. Double nine. OK. And the name on the card, please. It's Mr. J. Witten. W-H-I-T-T-O-N. N for never or M for mother? N for never. Thank you. And now I've nearly finished, but I just need your address and postcode. Yes, it's 42 South Street. OK. Is that Plymouth? London. And the postcode? It's SW25GE. That's fine, then. The ticket should be with you tomorrow. Is there anything else I can do for you? Yes. I was wondering if I could get regular information about what's on. Certainly. I can just add your name to our mailing list. Would that be OK? 
That would be very good. Yes, please. Oh, and there is something else. Sorry. One of our group is hard of hearing, and I've heard that you can supply special headphones. That's right. As long as you tell us in advance, we can always do that. I'll book those for you now, and you can just collect them from the box office before the show. Thanks very much for your help. No problem. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Bye. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 2. You will hear the organiser of a rock festival talking to the exhibitors and performers at a planning meeting. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Good evening, everyone. I'm glad you could all make this planning meeting for what promises to be the biggest and most colourful free rock festival ever held in the South East. Uh, so whether you're a performer, a craft exhibitor or an artist, we all extend a big welcome to you. Uh, could we turn first to the plan, so I can familiarise you with the layout of the site, uh, which, as you know, is an old football stadium. We're really lucky to have so much space this year. You can see the main gate at the bottom of the plan. Have you found it? Uh, that's where most visitors will enter. It's also the entrance for those taking part in the craft fair. We've set the stalls just inside the gate on the left in a circle. Uh, if you walk straight ahead from the gate along the path without turning right, you'll come to some steps up to the football stadium. On the left of the steps is the fringe stage. This is for alternative artists. Uh, they include folk singers, poets and other acts which are more suited to a smaller stage. And they should also enter by the main gate. On the opposite side of the steps is a restaurant, and adjoining that is the main festival information point. Here you can get extra programmes and up-to-the-minute information about events, and you can discuss any last-minute problems, although we hope everything will be running smoothly when the festival opens. Uh, right, uh, coming back to the plan, you go up the stairs to the stadium, the entrance for the rock bands is on the far side, and on your right is the main stage, which will have powerful illumination and amplification throughout the weekend. There will probably be TV vehicles adjacent, that's in this area only, for recording purposes. If you look at the outside of the plan, you can see a third gate for exhibitors, opening onto a side path. A little way down the path, before you get to the trees, is the building where the art exhibition's being housed. Then, finally, there's just one more building marked on your plan, quite near the main gate. It's divided into lock-up garages, so I hope you now feel quite familiar with the main festival area. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20, Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20.
We also hope that you'll have received your welcome pack. In it, you should find two parking tickets for yourself and anyone assisting you. An armband to indicate that you are an official visitor. One of our brilliant yellow badges with the new festival logo. A festival program and several sheets of information that we'd ask you to study carefully before the event. Please could you note that all setting up of stalls, displays and so on should be completed by 9.30am and that, unfortunately, we won't be able to allow any vehicles to enter the festival area after that time. Yeah, it's a big site, but even a few vehicles parked in the wrong place can block the paths. With crowds of people, and we are expecting several thousand, this can merely be a nuisance, but... If there's an emergency and access for an ambulance is blocked, the situation will become not just annoying, but also dangerous. And don't forget, it could be your mother or your child who needs help. Several exhibitors and craftspeople have asked us if any provision can be made for overnight storage of tables, chairs and display items, rather than having to take them home and bring them again. Uh, we're pleased to say that a limited amount of space has been made available in the building near the main gate. You'll be issued with a yellow ticket to reclaim your property, similar to the red parking tickets, so do check you bring the right one. But please understand that this is entirely at your own risk, as we can take no responsibility for items lost or damaged. Uh, I think that's all I have to say at this point, but thank you all for your attention. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear a conversation between a professor and a student talking about taking a course. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Excuse me, Dr. Twain. May I speak with you for a minute? Of course, please come in. I'm Charlotte York. I'm considering taking your course in tourism. Right. Well, Charlotte, how can I help you? I have been considering studying tourism. However, it is such an important decision that I would like to seek some advice about it first. Would you mind answering some of my questions? Absolutely. Fire away. Well, I have been discussing courses with my parents, and they are concerned that I will not be able to get a well-paid job with a degree in tourism. The reason that I want to study the course is that I have a great interest in the subject, and I think I would really enjoy it. I believe the only way that I will enjoy my life is if I enjoy my career. Happiness is far more important than money, don't you think? Absolutely. I would much rather be happy and poor rather than rich and miserable. Money cannot buy you happiness. I'm glad you agree. You needn't worry about money, Charlotte. A large part of the tourism course is dedicated to teaching students how to manage finances a skill that you can apply to your everyday life as well. I would also recommend that you take a sideline course in time management, as this can be incredibly useful in efficiently planning your workload. Efficiency is the key to success. I'll remember that. 
Now I have found that some students have natural talents that really help them to succeed in the course. Communication skills, for example, can be very beneficial. Do you have any strengths? Maths was always my favourite subject at school, so I really enjoy solving mathematical problems. However, I find statistics quite difficult. I have always been very capable and self-sufficient. I have a lot of confidence in my abilities. And will take the initiative in situations without needing to depend on anyone else for their help. That's a really great quality to have, and will be particularly useful if you choose to study tourism. That's great. I would recommend that you spend some of your time researching the course. A lot of people who are uneducated on the subject claim that tourism is a shrinking industry, and that it will become irrelevant in the future. If you study the published research, however, you will see that the truth is quite the opposite. The industry has, in fact, grown significantly as people have developed an ever-increasing interest in culture and travel. Have you compared the university course with a polytechnic? Yes, I have. I was interested in studying the course in modules. However, the university doesn't offer that option. I don't have enough funds to be able to attend an expensive university, so I was relieved to see that the course is quite affordable. I also considered attending a summer school instead of university to save money, and so that I could work during the rest of the year. But I really wanted the university experience. I think that university would suit you well. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions twenty-six to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-six to thirty. Now, what about the courses? Are you interested in any of the other subjects on offer? I have looked at a few. I was interested in travel and business, as it sounds similar to tourism. That is really worth learning. However, be aware that it is difficult and will demand a lot of your time. Okay, that's good to know. You might find that Japanese is an interesting course, and it will teach you valuable skills in speaking the language. Personally, it's not bad and could be of some help, but not that much. Okay, Japanese, got that. What about medical care? Well, if you have time, the course will teach you a lot about curing diseases and illnesses, or dealing with injuries outside. Although it's not essential. So okay, if it's useful, I'll take it. If you enjoy using technology and are worried about fulfilling the entry requirements, computing is very relaxed about the skills that applicants must possess. I'm terrible with computers, so I'm not sure that I would enjoy that course. How about public relations? Yes, I would recommend that course. It would be related to entering the tourism industry. As it will educate you on how to approach clients and develop associations with them. That's great. Thank you so much for your help. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear a talk about the practice of company outsourcing. 
First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome class to your very first lecture in this series on business in the modern world conducted by myself, Dr. Toby Bennett. Today, we will be looking into the practice of company outsourcing using TCP technologies as a case study. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with this practice, I will give you a summative definition. Company outsourcing involves the contracting of various business activities by one company to another. This practice will sometimes occur from a Western company to a party based in a third world country, the rationale being to make significant financial savings on lower international labour rates and to potentially increase quality. Now, our case study for today is TCP Technologies, a party located in India that receives outsourced tasks from Western companies. The manager of TCP Technologies is a man called Manjeet Khanna, who has personally developed a series of aims and philosophies by which the company is expected to operate. He claims that the most important of these philosophies is to create a workplace where each individual member has the opportunity to contribute their opinion to the operations of the company. That is to say that he found it important to develop a democratic environment. As a means of ensuring quality from every individual at TCP Technologies, a grading system has been developed that encourages an ethos of hard work and recognizes accomplishment. This grading of individuals is based upon a series of factors such as turnover, hours worked, and efficiency. Every month, Kana publishes the grades on an internal website where staff can access not only their own grades but also compare it to others. A spirit of playful competitiveness has developed through this method, which has resulted in increased efficiency and turnover across the company. Kana also saw it as essential to develop a culturally diverse group of employees as a means of presenting a multifaceted image that would appeal to a host of potential employees from across the globe. This cultural openness has not only increased the quantity of incoming contracted opportunities by 7%, but has also benefited the company itself significantly. A level of transparency now exists that had not before been apparent. According to questionnaires carried out recently, these newly introduced measures have significantly increased the rate of staff satisfaction, which has subsequently led to an increase of 32% in the company's income. These figures are truly admirable and serve as a testament to the measures that Kana has introduced to the workplace at TCP Technologies. In a recent interview published by The Economist, he declared, The figures speak for themselves. My system works. When asked if he had any advice for companies on methods they could employ to streamline workflow and increase turnover, he replied, It's simple, really. A company must see itself not as one entity comprised of nameless components, but instead as a living organism composed of cells, each one essential to the functioning of the whole. I suggest that the motto by which your management operates will be employee first. Many benefits have been reaped from the aforementioned changes in management style, such as a significant decrease in staff turnover. This improvement alone has solved many problems 
that had before stunted the growth of the company. A lot of these improvements came from the realization that the solution does not have to be produced internally, but can come from any other company. The grading system also immeasurably enhanced the dynamics of the company. The fact that this measuring system is solely produced for staff members and inaccessible by management means that it cannot be used as a judging criterion for promotion. It has proven itself a relaxed and informal means of stimulating workflow. When asked about specific features of his managing style, Kana mentioned that it is important for him to respond personally to any complaints filed by staff members. Having found the existing complaints process slow and ineffective, he introduced a new online system that created a direct line of communication between Kana and all employees of the company. The complaint form, dubbed by Kana as a ticket, eradicates the middleman, is easily accessible to all employees online, and has an interface that can be instinctively navigated. Any staff-related complaint, such as those relating to air conditioning and food quality, can be submitted directly to Kana via this online system. Entitlement to vacation is also a popular issue discussed through this forum. The main benefit of using this system is that staff must include their personal details on the ticket before they are able to submit it. In the past, anonymous complaints had been the root of much confusion and caused many wasted work hours, so the new system has put a ban on this form of complaint. That wraps up the lecture for today. Please remember that attendance is mandatory. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.